Here. Becker and Marone. Here. Here. And that is it. Can we do it? Can we do it? Then on the actual agenda is nice. public comment. Is there anyone uh, in the queue, Mr. Collins, for public comment? No, there's not. Have any okay. details <laughs> that we have not yet seen? No. On the agenda item. All right, and that brings us to approval of minutes. Uh, in second. Okay. Motion to approve minutes. Are you Lisa? Yes, Lisa. All right, does anyone have any uh, comments? Versions or deletions from the uh, provided minutes? Hearing none, I'm going to ask for uh, the roll to be called on approval of minutes. Juan Schneider? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Marone? Aye. And Becker. Aye. Which then brings us to old business. Let's get on the cover of the trail book situation. Okay. Um, we had uh, a little bit of delay on this, but I didn't get it on um, the council agenda for tonight, but we will uh, get it on or excuse me, it is on the council agenda for tonight. I didn't have it on the last one. Um, so I'll get the first reading tonight and then the second one um, at the next meeting. And the reason why is I had to look into it a little bit further and um, talking with the key manager. I think no matter what happens, we are still gonna need that seasonal parking restriction. Um, however, internal staff is uh, gonna try to work on this issue with uh, the housing authority and then in general because we don't believe that uh we should be selling parking permits to those who have off street parking available um so we're gonna we're working internally on that to see if there's a way that we can resolve that because i don't think we don't think it's fair to uh to the citizens in the area where there's off street parking available that they should have to deal with uh the inconvenience of having the on street Parking, blocking some of their driveways, mailboxes, et cetera. So, um, in, that, in that particular instance, there is off street parking that's adequate available. They're just not being allowed to use it. So, we're going to work on that and on the separate front. So, we'll move forward with the seasonal parking restriction. Um, however, we are going to try to resolve that issue where if there is adequate off street parking available, that those uh, tenants use that. Um, and I think that's probably the best and equitable solution long term. Um, however, we will, with what the uh, board approved for the seasonal no parking on the west side, um, that will, uh, the parking restriction will resolve that issue for the winter. Um, so we'll move forward with that and then just let council know we're going to work on that a little bit further. Anyone have any questions on that particular issue? Yeah, I, I just have a comment. Um, I, I think it was mentioned before that people that are parked on on the street are there because they have a, a, they don't have a, a driver's license, insurance, or registered vehicle. Now, are are any of those vehicles that are there unregistered? If they are, they should be. They should be told out of there. Yeah, yeah. That I, I don't. I can't answer that. But uh, yeah, that is something that the police will have to deal with um, if they do find any unregistered vehicles. Well, okay. Thanks. Anyone else have a question for Mr. Collins? All right, and that brings us to new business. Request to add a mid block crossing at the intersection with Rowan Street and Ballard Avenue. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to try to share. Picture where we're talking about here, if I can get it on here. 
Um, but this area on uh, Owen and Mallard, um, this is our last comparison. Okay, can you see that now? Yeah. Okay. We've had a few requests to make this this crossing here um, to add a cross a mid I'll call it a mid block crossing but to add a crossing right here um, and I was talking as I was talking through the Cumberland Trail issue with our streets department they've said they've got a number of requests to add a pedestrian crossing here as you can see there's a bus stop um, south of the, this intersection with Mallard and Bowen. Um, so there really isn't a good way for the pedestrians that a got off of the bus or getting on the bus or from these tenants in this area to cross the street without going all the way down to uh, Murdoch, which is quite a ways from from Mallard. Um, so the request from our streets division, um, and I agree with that. You know, from a transit perspective, is to add a crossing right here. Um, and that would also, they would install an ADA curb cut on the uh, this side of the street here, which would be the west side. Um, and then it would also connect to the doctor's court properties back here. So it'd be a very good location for connectivity. Um, as you can see, if I can move up a little bit, they do have a path that goes into that area as well. So this would be a good, uh, if we make the crosswalk here, it'd be a good connection into that whole doctor's court area. Um, generally for adding a mid block crossing, we look at things like uh, pedestrian and vehicle volume, uh, the roadway geometrics, vehicle speed. Um, I don't know that there's gonna be two crossings per day there, um, but there are about 6,500 vehicles per day and the nearest crossing is about 1,250 feet away. So it is quite a ways. <laughs> Um, and the speed limit is 35, so it, it would justify adding a at this location. Thank you, sir. Is that a second I heard? Lisa, second. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any, any comments regarding the uh, request for the mid block crossing? Mm -hmm. If no one else does, I would just like to throw up that possibly. I was a little embarrassed though when this came forward on the agenda because it popped into my head a few times over the years. Uh, that a crosswalk should be there anyway. Oh. Rather frequently. Good. Otherwise, here's the password. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> Juan Schneider. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Marone. Aye. And Becker. Aye. Which then brings us to staff statements. Um, yes, yeah, so last last meeting, um, Mr. Juan Schneider asked about the left turn arrow at ninth and nap. Um, we do not currently have left turn arrows um, on ninth either eastbound or westbound. Um, so I did talk a little bit about our, with our traffic signal uh, manager and we're gonna collect some traffic counts. Um, and we, we haven't had a chance to do that yet, but we'll get the traffic counts and analyze how many vehicles are turning left. Um, and then we can look into that a little bit further. What uh, we might be able to do is actuate the signals, which means basically that we use uh, cameras then to detect vehicles. Um, so that would keep, potentially keep 9th Avenue green a little bit longer, which would make it easier and allow more time for, for left turning vehicles. 
Um, and that would also allow us to eliminate nighttime flash and it helps us better manage the traffic flow. Um, but before we do that, we just want to make sure that uh, we, we need to analyze the intersection a little bit more as far as the uh, vehicle counts go. Um, and then we have one additional challenge there. When we actuate signals, when we use um, vehicle detection, we have to make sure that we have um, pedestrian push buttons so that if a pedestrian wants to cross the street that they can get uh, a pedestrian crossing. Um, currently, when we use the time intersection, which means we program them the time that the signals will change, um, we don't have to have just a push button because obviously the pedestrians can cross on the green light. However, once we use cameras, the pedestrian would potentially have to wait quite a long time if we don't uh, have the buttons there. And we have pretty tight right away there. So that's the other thing we have to look at. We have to look and see. Um, I don't think the right away is so tight that we're going to be able to be 100% ADA compliant on the push buttons. Um, however, there are some provisions that uh, we can possibly fit them in um, with this. Uh, if we go to the actuation system, um, and then whenever we redo the intersection, we'd have to upgrade them so they're completely ADA compliant. So there are some provisions that allow you to do some temporary things until you can get to complete a complete compliance. So anyway, we're still looking at it. And I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated as we uh, move forward. Okay, Jim. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, the reason I brought that up is from my personal experience of making left turns. There are some, a number of times I've waited for two to three cycles in order to clear the intersection. So there is a volume as far as left turns at that to, to go north. I'm sure there's other people that have experienced the same delays. Yep, and that's what we'll look at. We'll get those, we'll get the counts and then we'll see what uh, what we could do to help help that situation. If we do go, like I said, if we go to Probably, in my opinion, the best case scenario is if we go to that vehicle actuation, because then we can eliminate nighttime flash, which is a crash mm -hmm. issue um, and give additional time for the turning vehicles. It's probably a little better than a left turn arrow because it would resolve both those issues. Um, but it's going to take us, you know, a, a little bit of time to evaluate it. But I definitely I have them working on it, so within the next month or two, we should be able to get you more information. I believe it was a left turn uh, to go south from, from west to south. There is not. We looked at that. There's not. There is not. No. Let's double check. But, um, so, anyway, that's more to come on that. Okay. All right. Then that brings us to future agenda requests. Uh, have anything they'd uh, like to see on a future agenda? I do have a uh, request for an update, and I, again, I alluded to this, uh, Mr. Collins, yep. pre conversation, but uh, there's an article that recently appeared in the Ashcott Herald regarding scooters on campus. I was just looking for an update. And see that. Yeah, 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 so that will probably come to the board again next month. I know we have uh, our uh, the city's attorney's office has done some research on it, so they do have a proposed ordinance ready that we're going to be reviewing internally with staff um, in the next week, I believe, and then once uh, we get some more uh, staff has a chance to review that. Um, I anticipate I should have an update at the next meeting. It depends on which way it goes. I know that we, the board had already given input as far as um, what uh, what the board thought um, the electric scooters. So I guess I'll have to talk to our uh, the city attorney a little bit more. If we go with 
if the ordinance basically reinforces what the board already um, gave for input, then it'll probably just be an update. However, if anything changes, then you know we bring it back for more input. That's what I'm assuming will happen. Well, I, I, I guess my curiosity is the fact that uh, what action did council take after our recommendation? Our okay. council hasn't taken action yet because it was not. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't ready yet. So what uh, the attorney's office did is they took the input from this board and from the bike and pedestrian board, drafted a proposed ordinance, um, which then we'll have to discuss. And then after that, then we'll, I guess, we'll decide if it's, a, if it's ready to go to council, then that ordinance will go to council. If it's not, then it would come back for further advisement. But if you recall, <laughs> the board had decided a that uh, that with e scooters that the board would prefer that they be docked um, and that they be prohibited on streets with a speed limit of 25 miles an hour greater. Um, so those were two of the things that were taken into account. So. More. Yeah, that's I'll definitely have a status update for you one way or the other at the next meeting. Okay. And then the uh, the other issue, uh, hopefully to avoid situations like this, what's the status on live? Um, yeah, right now the city manager has um, advised that things will be virtual through May. Hmm. So okay. I think we're getting closer to in person, but it's still kind of a month to month thing. Anyone else have any challenge? Uh, anything at this point? Okay, I, I, I can't hear you again, but um, I think you did ask if there was, you know, we're looking for, for more comment. <clears throat> I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I believe we looked at the scooter situation and as a chapter review board, we, we voted it down. And I personally think it's a bad idea. I can see, I can see the city littered with scooters, but that's, that's just my thought on it. <clears throat> the other question I have is, this would be for Jim. Uh, do you know when the work is going to start on Jackson Street? Um, sure. Like I said, for the scooters, that's still um, the city attorney took into account the feedback from this board, and that's what the ordinance was based on. It's still got to be enacted on by council, but um, I, I guess, like I said, more to come on that. Um, and Jackson Street, we are almost. Uh, well, A, we're working on ordering the uh, the speed boards and the um, the rap, rectangular rapidly flashing beacons. So that we're almost those should be ordered within the next week. Um, and then the engineering department was working on the bid specs for the um, paint removal and restriping. So they're almost done with that. I've been working with them for the last few well. It's been a little while now, probably a month at least. They've been putting together the bid specs um, because what happened, well, not what happened, but the consultants gave us a design and a concept, but they didn't actually put together the engineering bid, something we could bid out. Um, so our engineering department had to put together the specs for the paint removal and the restriping. So that should be ready to be bid out here in the next week or two. Um, and then when we get that bid out, um, We'll obviously get proposals back and then once we uh, hire the contractor, so that'll be done then. Uh, we're planning on getting it done this summer. So it's in progress and it's moving along. Anything further than that, uh, Bill? No, thank you. Second. 
So Bill seconded if you made the motion, Dan. Yep, I did. All right, well then uh, I will uh, ask that uh, I will call this meeting adjourned. Again, we do need to call a phone call for the uh, vote, however, to adjourn. So again, we're all going to be called to adjourn. Juan Schneider? Uh, Christensen? Hi. Marone? Aye. And Becker? Aye. We are officially adjourned. Everyone, uh, quote unquote, next month. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone.